All right, hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to be um, talking about writing trig functions from their graphs. And I know, yes, uh, the previous lesson I um, spoke about, you know, like being done, probably doing a quiz today, but I figured I'd throw in this topic here too because it's helpful to um, kind of understand graphing trig functions by kind of working backwards using the graphs to write the functions instead of using the functions to graph the graphs, right? So anyway, let's take a look here. So we see when we look at this graph right here, it might not be clear whether we're supposed to use sine or cosine of x to help us out, <clears throat> to help us graph this. Um, when you'll, but you'll notice here that I specified we're going to use sine of x. Now, you can choose, um, you know, if you want to use sine or cosine in some cases. However, um, in this case, I really do feel like sine of x is the way we're going to go. If you remember that sine of x, the basic graph of sine of x, Okay, for our zero, our normal like zero to two pi, you know, kind of um, period, our normal period there, right? It goes, starts at zero, goes up to one, back down to zero at pi, back to negative, or down to negative one at negative, or back down to negative one at when x is pi pi over 3 pi over 2, and at 2 pi then it goes back to 0. And of course that wave repeats on and on and on in this direction, on and on and on in this direction too. Okay, cosine, okay, when you start on, when you do a similar kind of graph here, okay, for 0 to 2 pi, because again that's the normal period for cosine, oops, I should probably extend that just a little bit, there we go. Alright, um, cosine at 0 is 1, then it goes to zero at pi over two, then it goes to negative one at pi, then it goes back to zero at three pi over two, then it goes back to one at two pi. So you can see this, and again, <clears throat> continuing on, okay? You can see the differences between these two functions, okay? Um, sine, base, and it's, you know, basic one period form, kind of looks like an S, right? Cosine looks like a, a C that's kind of turned on its side. You know, you kind of see the there's the C right there, okay? Versus here's the S of sine, like that, right? So anyway, <clears throat> how does that clue us in here that sine's probably the way to go? Well, if you look here at zero, we're starting at zero, right? And so that gives us a nice easy point here. If we were gonna try and determine to use cosine here, well, we would need to know kind of like an X value for the peak of this wave or the, um, and the peak of this one, but it's not very clear exactly what that is. Um, probably one half. Again, if we just kind of use our, um, you know, our eyeballs there. Um, but let's use sine since it's kind of like set up nicely for that anyway. So sine, right? What do we have to determine here? Well, first we can kind of see that our midline, right? We are, we, our midline is going right through um, the middle of our wave here at zero. So in other words, we're not shifted up or down at all. We can see, however, that our amplitude is what here? From our center, okay, we go up two and we go down two as well. So the amplitude is two. Now our period, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If we start at zero and go out to two, that period length is two, right? So what kind of transformations would result in that? Well, here's what we're going to um, kind of like think backwards from what we've been doing. Remember what we did is we would take sine of blank and we put that blank, the shifting left, right, and the shifting um, <clears throat> sign of blank, we would take that shift left, right, and stretching or shrinking the horizontally, we put it between zero and two pi, and we would solve, and we'd end up with our new period. But we already have our new period here. What is our new period? It goes from zero to two. So what we're gonna do is work backwards. I'll put a zero and a two in here, and then we're going to work our way backwards to solve to make it two pi. Okay, so let's think about how we would do that here, okay? So I need this to get to be zero and two pi here and something in the middle. So what do I have to do to fix that? Well, if you'll notice here, this two is just missing a pi. So I'll just multiply both sides by pi, or really all three parts by pi there. So what I end up with, well, pi times zero is still zero. Pi times x is pi x. Two times pi is two pi. And so our new kind of in, you know, inner part of sine there is gonna be that pi x. That is what will go right in there. So that takes care of all the stuff that's on the inside. And then we just have to put that amplitude of two out in front there. And voila, 
there it is. There's our equation. Now, let's say we wanted to try and do this with cosine, okay? So with cosine, okay, um, we would see here that we're starting... And again, you can kind of pick where your wave starts. You could start your cosine graph here and then end right here if you wanted to. Or you could start your cosine graph here and end right here if you want to, okay? So you have a lot of choices there. Again, I'm going to start it here and go to here, okay? Just because that's the closest one. So um, that in that case, the period starts at 1 half and it ends at th um, 5 halves. Okay, and again, I want to get this back to be 0 and 2 pi. So what do I have to do? Well, I want to make this 0 first, so I'm going to subtract by 1 half on all the sides. Okay, like so. And so that will give me a 0, if I go up this way here, right? And that'll be x minus a half, and then it'll be um, 5 halves minus 1 half is 2. And now I can see, to get to the 0 and the 2 pi that I want, I just need to multiply everything by a pi. Okay, so what is that going to look like? Well, I'll pi times 0 is still 0. This will be pi, parentheses, x minus a half, or you could distribute that and just make it, you know, um, pi x minus pi halves. And let's go to 2 pi. And so that would be our new period right there for the cosine. So it'll be y equals, and again, a 2, because our amplitude is still, you know, 2 up and 2 down there. Okay, a 2 cosine uh, pi times x minus a half. And again, we didn't shift up or down, so that would be our answer there in cosine terms. All right, let's try another one. <clears throat> All right, so this one, again, I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what, this one naturally feels like a fit for cosine to me. Why? Because at zero, we're starting off the axis somewhat, okay? Again, if you wanted to, you could say, okay, well, I could say, I see a sine graph right here, Mr. Woodmire. Yes, you do, but the problem is, what is this x value, right? So using the sine graph would be a little bit tricky because our graph isn't crossing the x-axis at some nice you know, numbers like it was up above. <clears throat> However, we do see here that at zero, right, we're at a negative one half, and we end at, oh, this one's also not really crossing in a nice thing, a peak here. <clears throat> okay, let me see if I can figure something else out then. Okay, this one's a little bit trickier. So, um, well, I can see that we're going from, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, hmm. Okay, you know what? Let's skip that one, I'll come back to it maybe at the end here. Let's look at this tangent graph though. Okay, so tangent, all right, we've got, um, Again, some points here. Remember that this tangent, it's ending at negative, it starts at negative three pi over two and ends at three pi over two. Okay, so again, tangent's normal period is from negative pi over two to pi over two, with some you know blank in there. Okay, um, so we'll again we'll work backwards here. So right now our tangent is at negative three pi over two and three pi over two, and we need to adjust it to get it back to the original period here. Well, you can see that we just need to divide everything by three, right? Or multiply by one third. Because that'll get rid of these threes here and just create pi over twos. And that's what we'll do. Multiply by one third, multiply by one third. <clears throat> okay, so the one thirds cancel with the threes. And so we'll get negative pi over two. Oops, I forgot to multiply the, the x by a one third as well. Okay, so then we'll have um, one third x and then um, the three and the one through will cancel, and you have another pi over two, okay? So it's gonna be tangent of x over three, or just one third x, if you like. We're not shifted up or down at all, right? We can still see that center, that midline right here, right, um, is at the origin, so we're not shifted up or down at all. However, we can see that we are stretched to a negative two. Normally it would be a negative, um, or normally it would be only one away for our quarter point, Okay, again, you know, this is our quarter point right here. Don't know exactly the x coordinate for it, but that's okay. Well, actually, we do, sorry, it's 3 pi over 4, but we, we need to know what the y coordinate is here. So it would normally be down negative 1, but since it's negative 2, it means it's times 2. So it's going to be twice. And then it's going to be a negative 2 because our tangent's going down instead of the normal up, okay, for a positive tangent. And there it is, negative 2 tangent, 1 third x. Okay, let's try another one.
Okay, so again, this one here, cosine, right? How do I know it's cosine? Well, again, I think it's a natural cosine because again, at zero, we're starting off the axis and then we get a nice, you know, um, peak there. Okay, so again, sine, you'd wanna look for sine if you're starting kind of like um, on the axis. Now, I will also say here that our center is not the x-axis, right? Our center line here, well, let's see. We go from one to negative five. So what's halfway between one and negative five? Okay, halfway between um, positive one and negative five is um, negative two. So negative two is our center line here. So I'm gonna kind of draw that in for us. But again, even still, you can still see, you know, that that's off the axis, off of our center there. And how much off of it is? Well, it's three, so the amplitude here is three. Okay, and of course you can go up three this way too if you want to, right? So that helps us to see what the amplitude is. Okay, oops, I'm gonna keep that. Swing. There we go. Okay, um, and so then let's again adjust our period. Well, we start at zero and we go out to two pi. So actually, our period is the normal period here, right? So we don't have to adjust it all. So it's going to be three cosine of x, but it's going to be a negative three because we're starting below our center um, to start out there. Okay, and then we are also shifted down two, so we'll have a minus two on the outside like that. Okay, if you like, we can put parentheses here around the x and the minus 2 on the outside like so. Okay, and so there's our equation for cosine. Again, didn't have a period change there because it went from 0 to 2 pi. That's our normal period for cosine anyways. All right, and then tangent. And here it's much easier to see where the new where that translation up or down is, right? We shift up some here. Okay, that's our new center line. So we can see that we're shifted up 1. Okay, um, we can also see the restriction left or right or some, because normally, again, our asymptotes will be at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, but here in this case, our asymptotes are different. We'll use the, um, z there is an asymptote here at 0, it just doesn't see it. You don't see it there, but it's there. So um, we'll go from 0 less than or equal to x less than 2 pi, and we need to adjust that to be negative pi over 2 and then pi over two, okay? So what are we gonna do here? We'll, let's see, so let's, um, well let's multiply, let's get this, hmm. This is going to be a little tricky, I think. Let me see here. So we will, um, want to adjust our numbers here by solving. So let's see. <clears throat> I think we're going to want to shift things so that this zero to two pi is um, is even on either side. You see how we have negative pi over two and pi over two on either side? So we want opposites on either side here. So I'm gonna adjust this, okay, to get opposites on either side. So if I subtract a pi from both sides here, okay, uh, that'll leave us with a negative pi, x minus pi, and then two pi minus pi is pi. So we now have opposites on both sides. And that allows us now to just go ahead and divide everything by two to get the, or multiply by one half, to get that negative pi over two and pi over two that we want. And so what's going to go inside here is going to be one half x minus pi, and then pi times a half is pi over two there, right? Okay, and so there's what we want. So that's our inside of our tangent. like so. We're also very clearly shifted up one there, so we'll put the plus one on the outside, right? We just said that earlier. And then also, we have a lead coefficient here too, okay? Normally, we would go down one from our center or up one from our center, but that's not the case. We are instead going down one, two, three, okay? So it's negative three there. We're gonna put, again, it's negative because normally tangent goes up from left to right, but our tangent's going down like this, right? So that creates a negative lead coefficient. And so there is our curve. All right, so if you wanna stop there, I'll give you guys um, a homework problem or two, um, or two problems to do for homework, probably maybe one sine or cosine one and one tangent one, okay? Um, 
yeah. And so uh, if you want to stop there, um, that's fine. If if you want to see how to do this previous cosine one, I'll go ahead and do that one um, now. Okay. So let's see here. So, okay. This negative 4 pi, I can see 1, 2, and a half wave, full waves here, right? There's one full wave, there's another full wave, and there's a half of a wave. So what does that mean our period length is? Well, it takes us two and a half waves to go from negative four pi to four pi, which is a total of eight pi. So I can divide this eight pi by two and a half to figure out what the length of one wave is going to be. So eight um, divided by 2.5, or in other words, eight divided by five halves, okay, is going to be eight times two over five, which is 16 fifths. So that's gonna be my period length, which allows me then, since I know I'm starting at zero, right, I can say, okay, period, will be from 0 to 16 pi over 5. Okay, that's where our period is going to stop, like right here, 16 pi over 5. Okay, and now I can just adjust this. Let me go backwards here again. Okay, and we'll just adjust this to make it 2 pi, right? Um, you shouldn't have to, I will try and pick problems here so you don't have to do this um, for your homework and stuff like that, okay? I, I, to, yeah, it'll make more clear about what your, where your points are exactly. All right, um, anyway. Um, so going backwards, because again, our goal here is something between zero and two pi. So I just need to multiply this by something to get a two pi. So let's see here, if I multiply if I multiply by 5, that will cancel out with the 5 in the denominator. And I want to then divide by 8 so that the 16 and the 8 will simplify to 2. So 5 eighths. Okay, and we'll multiply this by 5 eighths as well. Okay, so the 5s will cancel. 16 and 8 will simplify to 2 pi. And then 5 eighths times 0 is just 0. And so there it is. Okay, so 5 eighths, 5 pi over, no, no, 5 eighths x. There we go. Okay, and so that's going to give us a cosine of five pi over, not five pi, five eighths x. Okay, we're not shifted up or down, so it won't be a plus or minus anything here. So we'll get rid of that. And then it's cosine of negative. Now, what's our amplitude here? Well, this is one half. This is halfway to one half there, or negative one half, I should say. So that's gonna be negative one fourth. Okay, and so there's our equation. All right, I'll stop there. I've used up plenty of time here. Again, I'll only give you two um, for your assignment there. So um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions, comment, or send me a message. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.